Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Tim Kerr. I'm with Maryland Department of the Environment in their Waste Diversion Division. Uh, I deal with the food diversion law that was passed in 2021, and we'll talk about that a little more here in a minute. This is the uh, second lunchtime webinar of Food Waste Prevention Week. Uh, yesterday, we had our first presentation. And if you want to review these webinars, uh, you can go to MDE's website, which I'll give you the link to, and you can review transcripts and, and uh, the uh, actual webinars themselves. Okay, so uh, today's topic, uh, yesterday, by the way, was on food donation and, and uh, providing food to people in need. Today's uh, topic is policies and prescriptions on waste on wasted food in Maryland. Uh, Maryland has implemented some regulations in the past few years about uh, wasted food and what businesses can do with it. So we want to go over uh, some of that as well as talk about what individuals and uh, anyone in their home or uh, on their personal. Um, life can you do to divert food waste from trash as well so uh thursday we we have a webinar on uh the compost uh, which is a part of organics recycling so if you want to learn about compost we have some speakers coming in and uh giving us a good description of how that works and on friday we have uh, compost and anaerobic digestion discussion on policies and technologies in those areas. So we'll have some speakers then as well. So those are the uh, other webinars for this week. But today we're doing Wasted Food in Maryland, Policies and Prescriptions. If you have any questions uh, as we go through the webinar, um, you can just go ahead and raise your hand and I can answer them right then. I know uh, if we wait till the end, people might forget what their question was. And uh, we can answer questions at the end as well. If you want to put any questions in the chat as we go along, you can do that as well, and we'll answer those. Uh, does everybody see the uh, slideshow OK and hear me OK? Good, good. OK. So this is Food Waste Prevention Week from April 1st to 7th, and Maryland is a partner in this uh, Prevention Week, and we are having like this series of webinars is one facet of the Prevention Week, and uh, you can go online and look at a lot of different resources for reducing food waste and uh, looking at some information and webinars from other organizations as well uh, on that uh, Food Waste Prevention Week site. So we're happy to be a partner of that and uh, we hope everyone will uh, learn a little something as we go through this week. Okay, so we're here to talk about wasted food, which is food that does not go to feeding people um, and ends up either as trash or uh, garbage or left unharvested on the ground. And so one of the problems with this is that uh, about 33% of all of the food in the U.S. is this wasted food. And that works out to about 78 million tons of food that goes to landfills or incinerators or down the drain if you have a garbage disposal or left in the fields to rot, but it does not end up feeding people. And that's the whole point of growing and providing food is so that people can get the resource. And if that's not happening, we wanna to try to correct that. Uh, Refed is, an, is a national nonprofit, by the way, that uh, does a lot of work on trying to prevent wasted food. And they're having a uh, convention this summer in Baltimore if you're interested. Now, all of this wasted food 
going into landfills and whatnot represents a tremendous waste of time from people harvesting it, uh, tremendous waste of energy and effort gathering the food and transporting it around the country, all the energy that's used, all of the labor that's used and the salaries and whatnot. If the food just goes to waste, that's like wasted energy and resources. So uh, one of the reasons we wanna try to prevent wasted food is to prevent this waste of resources. Uh, also, <clears throat> excuse me, when um, wasted food is put into landfills, it uh, is buried and it decays and releases methane, which is a greenhouse gas. And that methane escapes out of the landfill and enters the atmosphere and contributes to climate change. So that's one issue uh, that is really a, a important point these days. It's estimated that uh, methane and carbon dioxide from landfills is the third most uh, polluter of greenhouse gases in the world. So um, by burying these food wastes, we are uh, not only taking that food out of circulation for people who might need it, we're also contributing to climate change. So there's a lot of problems. And also we're filling up landfills. Landfills are finite resources. They have a certain size. So the faster they get filled up, the faster you're going to have to find a new landfill or a new disposal source. And in a state like Maryland that does not have a lot of open land for landfills, it could be an issue. So uh, we also want to lengthen the time that our landfills are useful and not fill them up with food, which takes up about a third of all the landfill space. And also, obviously, most importantly, we want to provide food to people who might need it, who are food insecure. And the idea of the amount of wasted food that gets thrown away in the U.S. while people are still hungry and, and don't know where their next meal is coming from is, is very obscene in a way. And we want to try to work on that. Okay. Uh, what can we do? What are some solutions for wasted food in the system? Uh, well, there's a couple that we're going to talk about. There's, there's donating any usable food to food recovery organizations. This is the most preferable way to deal with any kind of excess food. Um, local pantries, churches, schools, or food banks can accept uh, donated food and provide it to people who are in need. And that way the food uh, fulfills its main purpose, which is feeding people. Uh, we get a lot of uh, concerns at MDE about donation. We might be worried about any liability with people getting sick from any donated food that uh, they might contribute. Um, but uh, the federal government has passed a law, it's called the Bill Emerson Law, uh, it's a law that uh, provides uh, liability protection against uh, donated food and people that donate food in good faith. The food is assumed to be edible, fresh, and not rotten. And uh, by donating that food, you get limited, you get liability protection against any uh, foodborne diseases. And I have a link in this web uh, webinar if you want to take a look at that law. It's also called the Good Samaritan, the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Law. Now, there may be some restrictions on donating hot or cold foods. They have to be maintained at a certain temperature before they're served again. So uh, let's say you have a, a buffet restaurant or a cafeteria, and at the end of the day, they have some hot food that has not been set out for the public and uh, they want to donate that hot food. Um, they have to maintain it at a certain temperature. I think it's over, excuse me, 130 degrees for uh, two hours. It has to be consumed. And cold foods, depending on the food, has to be kept below a certain temperature and uh, can be stored for an extended period of time as long as it's kept cold. So uh, 
if you have any hot or cold foods that you want to donate, uh, there are some restrictions in any kind of pantry or food bank or school that you want to donate that to would have more information on that. So that's the that's the most preferable solution to the wasted food problem is to get that food out to people that need it. Another way that uh, wasted food is or can be used is using it for animal feed for uh, livestock or uh, poultry that are on farms. Um, you, that's a, a practice that's been going on for hundreds of years is farmers and uh, homeowners throwing any old food out for uh, any livestock or farm animals they might have. Now, there are certain regulations uh, from state to state that cover uh, what kind of condition the food has to be in to be donated for animal feed. Uh, so uh, you need to check those regulations, depending on where you are, uh, about uh, donating animal feed. Uh, different animals have different kinds of regulations on that. Uh, in Maryland, specifically, any food that's donated for animal feed uh, must be certified by the Maryland Department of Agriculture's state chemist. And there are regulations uh, on the State Department of Agriculture's website that go over these, uh, these regulations and describe what needs to be done to any food that's donated for, for animals. Obviously, the, uh, the purpose here is to try to prevent animals from eating food that uh, cannot be digested correctly, <clears throat> excuse me, that might be harmful for the animals that might be uh, a disease vector for animals. So uh, that's why there are certain regulations what has to be done to uh, food before it can be donated for animals. But that is a uh, another preferred method of dealing with wasted food if, if you can. And then another one is to uh, recycle, do organic recycling of any wasted food. Uh, some of the main types of organic recycling I have listed here, composting and anaerobic digestion. With composting, and this is an ancient art where uh, food is uh, piled up in a uh, heap or in a bin, and it's allowed to decompose in the presence of oxygen and air. And as the food decomposes, it... Uh, forms a very nutritious soil amendment for gardens or croplands or landscaping uh, called compost. And this has now become a very uh, booming industry across the country. Uh, composting is done at an industrial scale in many places where you have large rows or large piles of food waste mixed with things like uh, wood chips, and the mixture allows bacteria to feed on the food waste. Air is circulated through the pile, and uh, about 30 to 60 days, depending on the type of food, the material has been composted and turned into organic compost. Any weed or seeds that were left in the food product are now inert, and any uh, disease vectors and pesticides have also been um, inert, become inert and not uh, dangerous. Uh, so composting, you can often buy compost at Home Depots or get it free from local um, landfills that do composting or local composters. So there's uh, that is a, becoming a large business uh, for food waste diversion diverting it for composting. Anaerobic digestion is another organics recycling method. In this method, uh, food waste is digested in an anaerobic condition, meaning there's no oxygen allowed to come in contact with the food and the bacteria. So a different type of bacteria is involved in digesting these foods. And uh, if you look at the picture under anaerobic digestion, you might have seen these kind of uh, buildings. Basically, a lot of anaerobic digestion facilities are large uh, tanks that have a flexible 
lid because as the food is digested, it produces methane and that methane gas will expand. And if you don't have any flexible part of your tank, uh, you can get high pressures and, and cause an explosion risk. So they often have a flexible uh, ceiling or flex flexible part of the tank that can expand as the gas builds up. Now, the thing about anaerobic digestion that is uh, attractive for a lot of uh, processors is that not only do you get a soil amendment from the digested food uh, that comes out, but you can also take that methane and with some simple processing, it can be used as natural gas in any kind of uh, electrical power system. It's called biogas and uh, it can be put into uh, electrical grids to be used for natural gas that goes to people's homes to power um, appliances, to power electrical generators. Often it's often used for thing for their farms. Uh, there's actually farm equipment that's powered by this natural gas. And so that is a way that uh, these processors can uh, earn some money by recycling these organics. So anaerobic digestion and composting are two of the main ways that, that uh, organics recycling is, is done in Maryland. And I'll show you a chart in a couple slides of some of the facilities that we have in Maryland for these. The EPA has put out a what's called their wasted food scale that kind of uh, lists the different types of solutions that you can do with any food waste. Uh, from most preferable to least preferable. So it's in the shape of a, a kind of horseshoe with the left side being uh, the most preferable methods of dealing with excess food. And as you go around to the right side, you get less and less methods, preferable methods for dealing with food waste. So if you look on this uh, chart real quickly, the most preferable thing to do is not make any food waste in the first place. So prevent wasted food. And this can be done by uh, only buying what you need, uh, figuring out if for larger businesses, let's say, figuring out uh, how much wasted food they're creating so that they can adjust their orders for new food and try to reduce the amount of excess food that they create. That's obviously the most um, preferable way. Um, as you go along that horseshoe, donation and upcycling are the next most preferable. Like we said, we want any kind of food that can be donated to people for, um, you know, if they're in food need is definitely preferable. The food will get eaten and used, and that is preferable. Upcycling is just a way to take food waste and create uh, more valuable material from that. You often see a lot of uh, bio, uh, bio, not biodegradable, but bio based materials like uh, paper and cups and trash bags and things like that these days. That's a form of upcycling. Feeding animals is next. We talked about that. Leaving unharvested is in there as well. There's uh, a process called gleaning where people can go into a field after it's been harvested and uh, take up any kind of excess food that uh, didn't get harvested and use that for you know food banks and donation uh, that's called gleaning. Uh, then we have our compost and anaerobic digestion. That's the organic recycling part of the system. And if you go along to the very end, the last thing we wanna do, the least thing we wanna do is to landfill or incinerate our food waste because that's just wasting all of that, like we said, energy and resources that went into producing the food and leads to climate change. So that's the EPA's chart on preferable methods. So that's what Maryland has adopted as well. So what is Maryland? What are the policies and things Maryland has done to address the problem with food waste? Well, and I'll just, I'm just going to do a brief uh, review of some of the main uh, milestones on this pathway. 
in September 2015, the US EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and the Department of Agriculture uh, put forward a goal to reduce food waste in the US by 50% by the year 2030. So that's a national goal to, uh, and it's a challenge to every state to reduce food waste by 50% by 2030. And Maryland has in instituted policies to try to meet this goal. In 2017, Governor Hogan signed uh, House Bill 171, which was a study that Maryland Department of the Environment would conduct to uh, see how much organic waste and how much uh, where this organic waste is going in Maryland. So Maryland produced uh, this study group with a lot of stakeholders to study the problem of food waste in Maryland. And then in 2019, the study group published a study uh, called Yard Waste, Food Residuals, and Other Organic Materials, Diversion and Infrastructure Study Group. That's a big title, but uh, it basically gives a uh, summary of the problem of food waste in Maryland, some of the infrastructure Maryland has to deal with food waste, some of the needs that Maryland has to deal with food waste, and that's a publicly accessible report. You can click on the link there or go to the MDE website and you can find this report and look at it. And there's plenty of appendices that go into detail on a lot of the discussion points. So it's a very interesting report. Uh, as a result of that port, a report, uh, the Maryland legislature in 2021 passed uh, the Maryland's first food diversion law. It was called House Bill 264, and it's solid waste management, organics recycling, and waste diversion food residuals. That's the title, the official title. And basically, it set out requirements for businesses, not individual households, but businesses to divert their food waste if they meet certain criteria. Um, so in 2021, Maryland joined uh, several other states in the country to require food diversion in certain circumstances. And I'll talk a little bit about those circumstances here. But uh, so we've taken the first step in requiring policy-wise certain individuals, businesses basically, to divert food waste. So who has to divert food waste? Just real simply, um, this law defines food residuals that need to be diverted as materials derived from processing food or discarding food, including pre and post consumer vegetables, fruits, grains, dairy products, and meats. So that means any kind of food that is uh, wasted or uh, is not used in prepping food and any kind of food waste that is left over after uh, consumers have taken what they need or taken what they want. And that's the post-consumer part. So the law addresses both of those uh, types of food waste. So uh, a person under the law is someone who is required to divert their food waste from landfills or incinerators. Uh, so person has a, def has a specific definition in the law and basically, uh, there's two main criteria to be a person under the law. Um, there's a food residual amount that needs to be generated by a business to be considered a person. And when the law came into effect, that amount was two tons a week. So if a business produced over two tons a week of food waste, then they could be considered a person under the law. Uh, that was only for one year, though. In 2024, January 24, uh, January 1st, the uh, amount went down, decreased to one ton a week. So more businesses are now uh, persons under the law. And uh, for this, for now on, it's one ton a week of food residuals. And that might be reduced in the future, it might not, but uh, as of now, one ton a week is the threshold where if you generate above that, you 
are a per you could be a person under the law. There's a second part to be considered a person, and that is if there's an organics recycling facility, so a composter or anaerobic digester, within 30 miles of the business, the facility where this food waste is being generated. So if there's an organics recycling facility within 30 miles and the business is generating over one ton a week of food residuals, they have to contact that organics recycler and inquire whether they have the capacity to accept and process all of the business's food waste, whether they're willing to accept and process all of the food waste, and whether they're willing to enter a contract to take and process all of a business's food residuals. So if you're a business making over one ton a week of food residuals, food waste, and you have an organics recycler within 30 miles, you would be required to contact that organics recycler and uh, inquire whether they would be willing and uh, able to process all of your food waste, not half, not some, but all of your food waste, excuse me, and whether they would be willing to accept and write a contract to that regard. If they are not willing and they can't, if they can't process your food waste and they're not willing to write a contract uh, and there's no other food uh, recycler within 30 miles, then uh, you are not required to divert your food waste. If you generate under one ton a week, you're not required to divert your food waste. So you have to meet both criteria, one ton a week and an organics recycler within 30 miles that is willing and able to write a contract to take all of your food waste. Okay, so those are the policy wise, those are the two criteria that if a business meets those criteria, they have to divert any food residuals from or landfills or incinerators or any other kind of final disposal. So basically this is taken, um, how to determine if you're a person under the law. Uh, basically just follow some steps. By the way, restaurants are exempt from the food diversion law at this point. So restaurants do not have to divert their food waste under the law. Some do, a lot of them do anyway, but they're not required by the law. Cafeterias, on the other hand, do have to divert, or if they're a person, they are not exempt from the law. So the first step is to do a waste assessment. Um, that's basically where you measure how much food uh, residuals you're generating in a weekly period. You can do a daily average and multiply it by seven, or you can take a measurement for a week, however best works for your facility. If it's over one ton, you must contact any organics recycler within 30 miles, like we said, and inquire if they're willing to accept process and write a contract to take all those food residuals. If they are willing and able, uh, and you make over one ton, like we said, by law, you're required to divert. But the law does not specify that you have to divert to that organics recycler within 30 miles. If you have another organics recycler that uh, you're working with, you can continue to, and they're outside of 30 miles, you can continue to send your food waste there. But uh, you do have to inquire about any recyclers that are within 30 miles if they will take your food waste. If there's two recyclers within 30 miles, uh, you have to contact both. And if uh, one will take it and one won't, then you're required to divert because one will take it. Any records as far as contact and communications between the organics recycler and the business uh, and waste assessment data has to be kept on site for three years and produced at any uh, inspection that MDE might, might take. So this is some of the policies that we have in Maryland to uh, try to reduce food waste going to landfills at least. Other states have similar, have 
policies as well. Some are similar to this. Uh, other ones like Vermont have a total food waste ban. So uh, any amount of food waste is not allowed to go to the landfill. But this is what happens in Maryland. Now you can get a waiver. We do allow waivers from the food waste uh, diversion law. If uh, a person has to spend, or if, if the cost of diverting food waste from uh, or an organics recycler or to an organics recycler is more expensive by 10% than sending it to a landfill or incinerator. So if you're sending your food waste to a landfill or incinerator now, or before the law was passed, and the law comes into effect, and now you're required by the law to send it to an organics recycler, but uh, the only price you can get from that organics recycler is more than 10% more expensive than what you're paying to send it to your landfill, then you can apply for a waiver uh, on that condition. And MDE will review your waiver and uh, either give you a waiver or deny it. Uh, you can also apply for a waiver for any other reasonable circumstance that you believe is uh, necessary that uh, you cannot divert all of your food waste for, for whatever reason that you think you have. Send in your application to MDE and we will review it. And if it's a reason, we consider it a reasonable circumstance, we can give you a waiver uh, for that reason as well. Um, waivers last for a maximum of 12 months. They could be for shorter periods of time, but they last for a maximum of 12 months. And uh, they have the ability to be renewed an unlimited number of times, but you do have to renew it uh, 60 days before your current waiver expires. Uh, you can read more about that and look at any waiver procedures on our food diversion webpage, which I'll show you in a minute. So uh, that's that's the way if, uh, again, we don't wanna harm businesses if it's gonna cost a lot of money to send it to an organic recycler. And then I'll just leave this here. There are certain reporting requirements that all businesses must do on a yearly basis. Um, if you are a person under the law and you have to divert, there is uh, certain items that you have to track over the course of a year and submit a report to your local county where your facility is located before or by March 1st of every year. And this includes all of the solid wastes that uh, your facility produces, like garbage and stuff that goes to a landfill. Uh, the total amount of recyclable materials that you collected and recycled, um, where any solid waste and recyclables went when they left your facility, um, the name of each and location of solid waste facilities, uh, the name of haulers that take your solid waste. Uh, there's a whole list of items that you would have to uh, keep track of and report that to your local county on a yearly basis. So if your business is required to divert food waste by law, you're also by law required to report uh, not only on your food waste totals, but your recyclable totals, whether plastic, metals, or paper, and solid waste totals as well. So there are reporting requirements that Maryland has if you have to divert your food waste. Uh, businesses can complete these reports uh, by paper. MDE has a paper form that you can fill out and mail it off to whatever county your facility is in. Some county websites uh, have their own forms that you can fill out online. So if you're in for, let's say, Montgomery County, you can go onto the Montgomery County uh, Environmental Protection website and uh, navigate to the recycling page, and it will have a link for you if you're a business to report your yearly totals to the county. And Maryland, the state has also developed an online form on the MDE website where businesses can report this information and MDE will pass it along to the individual county where the facility is located. 
So we don't collect this information ourselves. It's collected at the county level, but we developed a, an online form to make it easy for businesses, an easy place that they can locate the form and fill it in and send it to us and we'll send it to the counties for them. And there's links to all of these items in this uh, slide. So if you wanna review these slides and click on those links, it'll take you to each of those uh, items. Uh, also our MDE's business reporting form is on our webpage. And this is, a, this is a illustration of where it is on our webpage. So if you go to the webpage, which is linked right under this image, uh, this is where that uh, reporting form would be. Okay, and it also we also have a guide that explains how to fill in these reports. And we have a YouTube video of a webinar we did on how to fill in these reports. So if you are interested in reviewing the methods and have questions about how to fill in these reports, uh, you can either look at the guide or look at the YouTube video and it'll go through all the steps for filling in those reports. So if you're a business, and you have to divert. Even if you don't have to divert, your business that doesn't deal with food at all, we encourage uh, your business to re report your recycling totals to your local county because they're required to report to the state on a yearly basis how much recycling uh, the county has done. And it has by law be a certain amount. So any reporting that a business does to the county helps the county with their uh, recycling amount. Okay, so I wanna talk here a little bit about the resources that MDE has for dealing with food waste. So this is not just for businesses, this is for individuals and, uh, and groups. So on uh, the Maryland Department of the Environment uh, website, there is a page called uh, solid waste management, organics, recycling, and waste diversion, food residuals. This is the web page that is dedicated to the food diversion law. So this web page has a lot of resources on it dealing with food waste. And what I'd like to do is just run through quickly some of these resources that you can access on this page and uh, get help and learn more about this. So, uh, if you look at these slides, you can click on that food diversion webpage link and go straight to the webpage, or you can just type it into Google or go to the Maryland Department of the Environment homepage and uh, search food diversion on this in the search box, and you can get, get right to this page. So this is what the top of the page looks like. So if you open up the page and it looks like this and it says this at the top, you're in the right place. So let's look at some of the things that this page can provide to you. The uh, web page provides uh, a food donation guide link. So you can link to a food donation guide that MDE produced. This gives a lot of resources for where to donate food in the state, um, how to uh, preserve food for donation. Again, those hot foods and cold foods. Uh, about, um, sorry, it talks about uh, different uh, organizations in the state that take food donations. So this is a great guide if you have excess food and you want to learn about donating the food to uh, food recovery organizations and whatnot. This guide uh, is a great resource that you can use to take a look and see where these organizations are and contact them. And uh, what are some of the what are some of the regulations involved with donating food? So that's a resource that's available on the uh, web page. So uh, I encourage you to look at that. Another resource we that you can access on that uh, web page is a wasted food toolkit for Maryland schools. This is a document published by MDE that talks about individual schools and what they can do to educate students about food waste and help uh, prevent food waste in cafeterias 
at lunchtime and any other after school activities and uh, how students can uh, get involved with recycling food waste, how they can set up a composting system or vermiculture, which is using worms to digest food waste, uh, donating food to farms, things like that. So this has a lot of information. If you work at a school or your child goes to a school or you're just interested in what schools are doing for food waste, this gives you a lot of ideas. It has case studies. And uh, so this is a great resource for schools to use to uh, deal with any wasted food that they might produce. Another, uh, another resource we have on the page is a map that uh, lists all of the permitted organics recycling facilities in Maryland, as well as bordering Maryland and other states. And it also shows a 30 mile buffer around that organics recycling facility. So you'll notice the blue circles in this map uh, are organics recycling facilities, the 30 mile buffers that are located in Maryland. The pink circles are 30 mile buffers around uh, organics recycling facilities out of Maryland, but the 30 mile buffer does reach into Maryland. So if you're a uh, facility in Maryland that produces food waste and you're required to divert and you're within a 30 mile buffer of an out of state organics recycler, you would still fall under the laws having to divert because you're within 30 miles of an organics recycler. Now, all of the ones in Maryland are permitted facilities. It includes uh, an anaerobic digester in Jessup, Maryland, and composting facilities in uh, Central Maryland and the Eastern Shore. Uh, basically, you, it has contact information for these facilities. If you wanna find out if you're within a 30 mile buffer, to see if the law applies to you, you can just type your address in the search bar at the top of this, and it will point out where you are on this map, and you can then identify any uh, recyclers that are within 30 miles of your facility. It'll give you a list of all of the recyclers with their contact information. So if you are uh, required to divert food residuals, uh, this is where you would identify facilities within 30 miles. So that's on the website as well. Uh, you can also, when you look at this webinar, you can just click on the map and it'll take you directly to the map as well. All of the uh, images and copies of pages and forms that you're gonna see in this webinar are hyperlinked. So you can just click on it and go right to the form or right to the page. So that's a great resource to uh, for that part of the law. There's also a compliance guide with frequently asked questions. So if you got questions about diverting food waste and how it might apply to you and, you know, it, does your apartment building have to divert food waste? You know, all kinds of questions. Uh, you can check out this compliance guide, which is also linked on the website and in the webinar and take a look at uh, it goes through the regulations and gives further explanation in more general terms about um, the regulations as well as frequently asked questions. So this is a good resource to look at as well. And there's many more resources on the website. We talk, we have links to food recovery and donation organizations, links to food scrap haulers, consultants, businesses that specialize in uh, working with individuals and businesses to uh, track and divert food waste. There's uh, links to food summits that MDE has held. We just held a food summit uh, two weeks ago at Towson University. Those are great opportunities for people to come and, and learn about uh, food waste and uh, how to reduce it. There's fact sheets, technical resources, and grants on our webpage and links to a whole lot of stuff. There's plenty of resources and we're constantly adding to that page as well. So that's a, that's a great resource to go to. Now, I just wanted to show you this. We've talked about Maryland's regulations for food waste and food diversion. Uh, there are other states 
in the country that have uh, food waste diversion or food waste bans. This is a map by the U.S. Composting Council. All of the states that are in the orange color are ones that have uh, food waste regulations or diversion laws. So you'll see it's mostly on the uh, west coast of the U.S. and in the northeast. You can see Maryland right there as well. Uh, some other states have bans on other organics like yard trimmings and natural wood waste and things like that. Uh, but the ones that are in orange are, and California, which is in blue, have uh, food waste regulations. It is a growing trend. More and more states are looking into food waste diversion laws. So uh, we can expect more and more states to adopt regulations in this regard. Because, like we said, the EPA has a national goal of 50% reduction by 2030. And so states are, are encouraged to. Um, take steps to reduce food waste. Okay, well, uh, that's a brief overview of the policies and resources that Maryland has available for uh, information on food waste. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact uh, either one of these three people on here by email, or you can call our department uh, by 410-537-3314 or you can contact your local county uh, recycling coordinator by clicking on that link. And we also have a link on our webpage to the county recyclers. So if you wanna identify that person in your particular county, you click on that and it will give you their contact information. So I hope this was an informative webinar on uh, the steps Maryland has taken to implement its food waste ban and some of the resources that we've produced to help reduce food waste in the state. Um, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer any right now. I think there's some in the chat. Let's see, but I think, oh, Sh did Shannon answer that? Okay. Let's see. All right, good. Um, wasted food policy. Are there any questions about uh, anything else with uh, food waste in Maryland and our policies? Like I said, in our webpage, there's a plenty of information and resources. Uh, if you would like to compost at your house, there's resources for doing home composting, which is a very popular activity. I live in Baltimore City. I have a very, very small backyard but I do some home composting there. You can buy uh, plenty of uh, material to compost at home. Um, there's uh, a lot of uses for compost if you're a gardener. Um, so it's how we get rid, I get rid of my food waste uh, at my house. Um, and uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of technology for composting that's being developed now. Uh, the old image of a big pile of dirt and food waste uh, is is still a good view of the industrial scale of, of composting that we have in the state. But there's also in-vessel composting, which is where all the composting is done contained in a vessel that circulates air. And so you don't have an open pile. Uh, there is uh, covers that composters use to cover their compost pile. There are filters, biofilters that uh, composting organizations use to reduce the odors coming from their composting uh, piles. So uh, there's a lot of uh, good technologies out there for dealing with food waste. Uh, just, just as an FYI, there's, there's on the market these days, there's a lot of uh, devices for restaurants, waste generators to deal with their food waste by macerating and, and uh, dehydrating their food waste so that it would volume of the food waste and can better, they can better dispose of it or even send it down the drain um, instead of packing it away in their garbage. Now that does not count as food diversion in Maryland's law, but it is a way that uh, 
organizations are looking to at least reduce or prevent any food going to landfills. So there's a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's a growing and very dynamic industry these days. And uh, new uh, processes and items are being uh, invented all the time. So I hope everyone uh, enjoyed this and got information out of this. Uh, just a reminder, we'll have uh, Thursday's webinar will be on composting if you are uh, interested in more information on that. And Fridays will be on composting and anaerobic digestion policies and technologies. Should be an interesting discussion there as well. Um, so if uh, no one has any more questions, please, uh, this will be posted on our website uh, later today. You can access it there. And uh, I thank everybody for coming and uh, hope to see you soon on our website. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Yes, you can share it with others um, wide and far. <laughs> share it as, as wide and far as you like. Thank you, everybody. Take care.